Hi guys and welcome back. So today we have a new all-in-one flight controller and this is from Rotor Riot. It's an F4 all-in-one flight controller with an MPU 6000 gyro and Betaflight OSD. And if we take a look back here, it just tells you built-in current sensor, 8 megabytes on board for the black box log. It supports S Plus, you know, Spectrum, uh, Crossfire. So what makes this a little bit different? Because you could only do so much here. And one thing I like off the bat is they have included a 9 volt regulator on board because I feel as if this is you know towards more beginners than uh, advanced users and what do I mean by that advanced people or just people who are really into the hobby and really just obsessive about their tune they will not pick one of these up and why why why, why wouldn't they it's soft mounted it's actually double soft mounted it's soft mounted at the gyro and it has rubber grommets that soft mounts it. So it's double soft mounted. Now soft mounting introduce latency, believe it or not. And uh, basically you turn and then the gyro kind of, I mean the, the soft mounts kind of, you know, dampen that. And that gives you a little latency. And what do I mean by obsessive people with their tune? Well, those people really like super sensitive gyros. And they like their quad to be super clean because it just feels insanely responsive. However... For the average user or the beginning user, you won't even notice the difference uh, in the beginning. And it's not really that much of a big difference, but just some people are obsessive about that thing. So it's it's pretty cool. The the, the quality looks okay. They had issues when these first came out. Uh, they had a quality issue with the with the gyros here. Uh, they were basically misaligned, so your quad cup would be flying like this the whole time. And they were saying to add some degrees off. But you know how hard it is to calculate how many degrees you're off? It's not even funny. So, um, yeah, if anyone had one of those bad ones, then you can just contact Rotorite and they'll send you a brand new one. So now you have two. If you can figure out how to fix the older one, you get another one for free. So that's cool. It's like buy one, get one free uh, if you're one of those lucky people. Anyways, let's take a look at this. So they kept with the trend. That's one thing I like so far about this board. Double soft mounting, uh, I mean, it's an MPU 6000 gyro, but, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, back to my point. They kept with the trend. The trend is the new 9-volt regulator on board, which gives you super clean, beautiful feed. However, I don't know which 9-volt regulator they're using on board, but what we're going to do is we're going to test the living crap out of it. We will set it up on my testing environment and seeing how well the 9-volt regulator holds up, as well as the 5-volt regulator holds up. In theory, it should hold up just fine, but it's really nice to get an idea of how well this, uh, this thing's going to perform. Now, another thing... This board is so packed, they don't have room to label everything. However, they do provide you with the um, instruction manual here. And if we take a look here, let's go ahead and check out the orientation. So what they wanted you to do, or basically this board was made where the uh, XT60 is supposed to come off to the right. You have your USB to the left, so that's pretty nice to see. And uh, if we take a look here, here we have two ground pads. Here's our 9 volts. We have two 9 volts here. VTX. So this is the yellow wire that will go to your VTX. And then up above it is the camera. And this is where the yellow wire coming from your camera would go here, go through the board, go through this OSD chip, and then pop out through the VTX, which is right there. And if you take a look here, you'll see it, the VTX right there. And then we have a ground, which would be this one, I think. Yeah, that one. Ground TX6, RX6. So it has three UARTs. And UART1 has a switchable... Uh, inverter for S bus. So you would use UART1 basically for all your receivers. It's highly recommended. If, even if you're using iBus, just I think you'd have to disable the uh, inverter. We'll take a look at where this one, the inverter is actually, and we'll figure out how it works there. So here it has a port for RSSI, 3.3 volt regulator. If you're still using PPM, they even have PPM support. So that's pretty nice. It's it's very backwards compatible. If we could leave it at that, that's the word for it. And we have another ground. However, it won't go super backward compatible to, I think, PWM. I don't think there's uh, enough ports here for PWM. So, yeah, that's something to take note of. Uh, they don't have, believe it or not, they don't have ESC telemetry. But, but, this is important. Um, I really like nowadays seeing, I would rather see a ground pad by the ESC signal than a telemetry pad. Because um, I've been doing a lot of testing, and um, you should definitely ground the signal of your ESC. Even though the whole thing is grounded through the power here, still, wrap that ground. If there is no ground here, wrap it around the, the power ground of the ESC and ground that thing. Um, it could make some weird jitters, weird drops. 
uh, some e- some dips. I believe some of the dips are caused from not grounding ESCs, believe it or not. And it might have you to think that, oh, well, I think the ESC is better. I think the motor is better. Most of the time, it is the motor and the ESC possibly. But that is also a huge cost. That's the first thing I would do is I would make sure I have all my signal, ESC signal wires soldered on to a ground pad. So that's very important to take note of. Let's take a look down here. We have the buzzer here. So we have the buzzer minus and buzzer positive. They do provide you with a buzzer, so that's pretty cool. It's pretty much ready. You just solder that guy right there on the end. So that's cool. TX3, RX3, you could use that for whatever you want. Uh, however, it's not inverted. Okay, so there is no, the inverter is not really switchable. You just, you, there's two pads basically, if you could take a look here. If you're using SBUS, and they should have done this like some kind of outway, SBUS would go here, see, inv inverted. So this is where SBUS would go on a FR sky. So it would be which pad? The third pad on the bottom. That's where your signal would go from your SBUS receiver. If you're using IBUS or something that doesn't run on uh, inverted S, um, an inverted signal, inverted SBUS signal basically, you would go to RX1 here. So that would be it. For example, IBUS. I don't know if Spectrum's SBUS is inverted, but I, I really don't think so. But you would probably know if that's your transmitter and receiver. So yeah, you, you or you could just quickly search that. I don't know because I don't play with Spectrum, so I can't answer that for you. But if you're using FlySky IBUS, that's where you connect it. Or if you could use uh, P, if you're still using PPM, you would connect it right there. All right, so that's cool. All right, let's take a look here. We have five volt, five volt, five volt ground ground. Okay. So what I would recommend doing, now your camera here is all the way up here. And if the camera is up here, it's taking 9 volts. However, I really don't recommend you give a camera 9 volt, even though they could take it just fine. But personally, I wouldn't do that because there is some power loss. It's a minute power loss. But, you know, you, you, you make the voltage regulator inside the camera and work a little bit harder. And we don't want that. We just want to give it 5 volts. So I would give the power to the camera from back here, actually. I would take one of these 5 volt and grounds and pass it over to the camera. And the VTX, I would just give it a 9 volt and ground. Now you have a spare 9 volt, and I think you still have two 5 volt pads here. Uh, one is gonna be for your receiver, so I would connect my receiver here, like ground, 5 volt, and IBUS here, or SBUS uh, FR Sky here. You're good with your receiver. Uh, camera, 5 volt ground, and then I'd connect the yellow wire of the camera right there. And then VTX, there we go, VTX, 9 volt ground. So you're left with one 9 volt and another 5 volt here. This is for your LED. If you're rocking the LED, you would do that there. Buzzer down here. So it's pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, it does have current sensing. It does have beta flight OSD. Um, what else does it have? And the orientation is perfect. Yes, there we go. So if you wanted to connect your ESCs, if you really don't know how to set these things up, um, your ESC would go here. You got your, let's see, which one's positive? Uh, kind of difficult. This is all kinds of crazy stuff here. Now I can't really. Oh, there we go. Just start right there. Yeah, that's why they add part of this. So here's the positive for your ESC power. Here's the negative for your ESC power. And I, yeah, where is the signal? This is so complex. It's actually it's not complicated, but it's really jam packed. It could have been a little bit more clear. Your signal wire would go here, which would be the white wire most of the time. Uh, if most of your ESCs, white wire would go here, and the black wire would go here. I'd highly recommend you ground your black wire. And on, if you had a flight controller which does not have an extra ground, wrap it around the ESC power ground and stick them together there. And obviously this is where your battery would go. We have a little diode here. Or, yeah, we have a little, I think this is like a TVS diode here, which is nice, I mean, I guess. Um, same thing goes for here. Pretty basic and straightforward. Do we have anything on the other side? Let's take a look here. A little bit smaller so here they kind of help you kind of but it's really sad because they don't even put fly sky on the radar some of you say my fly sky might be a piece of shit but to be honest fly sky is a bigger and better company than fr sky maybe not in our hobby but they do some crazy advanced things and they give us the little leftovers even those little leftovers is 10 times faster than fr sky believe it or not and we've tested that now, some people might d disagree, or some people, I don't know, yeah, you guys are crazy. Anyways, so, um, if you wanted here, they kind of helped you also. Let's just say you wanted to connect ESC telemetry for some reason, you would connect all ESC telemetry wires to RX3. However, do not do that. Do not, I repeat, do not do that. Why? Because, so far, I have burnt three E three or two ESCs doing that. It's every quad where I connected the telemetry, this is where I connected, I wrapped all the telemetry wires together and then I just got another little wire and I stuck it on one of the RX pads. 
something's I don't know what the hell's wrong with it. It just burns. And it's not I don't have anything like bridged or soldered together. But something's up. And um yeah. And it was more than one quad. So you could say maybe one quad, maybe I don't know, we could say the solder popped through the heat shrink, touched the carbon frame, grounded it, burnt the whole ESC. No, that didn't happen because it happened on more than one quad. So yeah, and even quads that have telemetry pads, I don't know what the hell's wrong with the telemetry or the ESCs. So that's something to take note of here. Um, and I've also had people comment about the same thing. So take, the, you know, I, I really don't see the reason to, to actually use ESC telemetry. It's actually pointless. I mean, the only uh, software that actually has proper ESC telemetry, in my opinion, is KISS. Because when I used to think of ESC telemetry, that's what I always thought. Like you get in each corner some telemetry about each ESC. But that's not the case. You just get one. You don't know what the hell it's for. So yeah, take that into consideration. Um, overall, the board looks pretty well made. I mean, they have their quality issues, but you know, it's a, it's a brand. They have to keep their image. So if there's any issues, you email them, they should fix it right up. Um, but again, it's very difficult. Like even it's, it's very difficult to know if there's really an issue until you get like more than 20 complaints of the same issue, because there's a lot of people, a lot of people who burn these because they don't have the experience just yet to actually build correctly. Uh, but the gyro, obviously that was a quality issue. Uh, overall, it's pretty well priced, 40 bucks. I mean, it's basically competing with others, almost. Others, you know, most of the things now are between 35 and and 40 bucks, really, all all on flight controllers. So this is pretty cool. I mean, double soft mounting, that's nice. But if you know, I wish it had a little bit sensitive gyro. But that could be an issue to some people if they have crappy ESCs, and you even though you're you're truly in soft mounted, the noise touch that gyro, it'll start twitching. Um, so I, it's something different, something unique. Uh, you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, vibrations or oscillations through the frame, but a, a PID tune, you're still gonna have to worry about your PID tuning. Um, but overall, it's a nice little board. Now we will be testing this and bashing it through our testing setup, seeing how well the, the nine volt regular onboard handles and as well as the five volt regulator on board uh, are going to handle it. But overall, um, that's all I could really say guys. So it's just a little overview um give my opinions and uh if you did get a faulty one just email them they'll fix that up so you get basically two for free that's awesome uh, but then you're gonna have to modify the other one um and uh yep that's it guys so i really hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh if you guys have any questions or any suggestions feel free to let me know and i will see you next time guys take care